Joining us now, uh, Greg Jarrett, Fox News analyst, author of the number one bestseller, The Russian Hoax. By the way, out in paperback, February 12th. Uh, we have details on Hannity.com. David Schoen with us, civil liberties attorney, criminal rights attorney. And thank you both for being with us. You know, My Greg, uh, I was, you know, if somebody was compromised, why would you do what the White House did today and literally, you know, call out their failure to adhere to a treaty we had? Well, it sounds like if he was so compromised, he'd never be able to pull off a move like that, doesn't it? Well, absolutely. Not only that, but if you examine the record carefully, you see that uh, President Trump has championed more sanctions against Russia in the first two years in office than Obama did in eight years. A lot of presidential candidates and indeed presidents, George Bush, Barack Obama, uh, and uh, Donald Trump, had all at one point in time vowed to try to improve relationships with our enemy, Russia. In the end, um, it never works. One of the, the, I mean, the primary basis for investigating the president uh, for Trump-Russian collusion was the fact that the FBI and the CIA and others in the Obama administration didn't like uh, the statement by President Trump that he was going to improve relations with Russia. So they went after him with a vengeance, ignoring the fact that Barack Obama and George Bush had done the same thing. Remember Hillary Clinton's famous reset button with Russia and, and Obama confiding in Medvedev, you know, no, tell it goes Vlad. like this. It goes, listen, listen, tell, tell Vladimir I'll have more flexibility after the election. Tell, tell, tell us to Vladimir. I will convey to Vladimir. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that sounded like so, illusion to me. It also it sounds like it, it, that's a great imitation. But, I mean, it was, the whole Trump-Russia collusion hoax was based on um, the fact that the FBI and the CIA didn't like the fact that the president was... Uh, Offering to reach out to Russia to improve relations. Well, everybody does that. What's your take, uh, David Chung? You've talked about the double standard in the criminal justice system. This is also the double standard at work in foreign relations. It's part of this, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't, frankly. Anything Trump does, the Democrats are for the opposite. But look at it. Uh, Obama spoke to the world's worst anti-American, American-hating tyrants. His theory was abandon our friends, talk to the worst people, and then get suckered by them, which he did with the Iran deal and all of those things. Now, if President Trump says, on the one hand, he'd like to make peace with those, or see if it's possible to make peace through strength with our enemies, North Korea, China, Russia, then that's a horrible thing to do, according to the Democrats. We shouldn't even be speaking to them. Well, there certainly won't be any peace deal if he doesn't speak to them. And it works the other way, too. So it's this double standard hypocrisy that's unbelievable. Where were all of these folks on Syria when President Obama drew his red line, and then when they crossed the red line, did nothing? Where was the Democratic leadership then? Let me, you know, the hypocrisy reigns. And, of course, then we have, we do have some Russia collusion, and that's the dirty dossier Hillary paid for and was disseminated to the public for the purpose of destroying Donald Trump with Russian lies, and nobody seems to care at all about that. Or the Russian dossier was used to spy on Carter Page, a Trump campaign associate, and to do that, we now have the knowledge, Greg Jarrett, Bruce Orr warned everybody that, Christopher Steele hated Trump, Hillary was paying for it, and it's not verified, but yet it became the bulk of information in Pfizer requests with glaring omissions like Hillary paid for it, and literally putting it forth as gospel truth, and they never even checked it at all. You know, Alexander Hamilton in Federalist Number 1 said, A dangerous ambition more often lurks behind the specious mask of zeal. And Hamilton knew more than anybody else. How I got a question. Corrupt. Did you know that off the top of your head, or <laughs> are you just showing off and reading it and pretending like you knew it? Uh, I, I confess that in college I, I became addicted to the Federalist Papers, so yes, that's committed to memory. Oh, my God. Well, uh, I can quote Thomas Paine, 1776, where the guides and dictates of one's conscience irresistibly obeyed, there would be no need for any other lawmaker. You know, he sets out and he goes, government in its best state is but a necessary evil in its worst state and intolerable one. Oh, so I'll match wow. you quote for quote today. Go ahead. You, you I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing. House, if that's helpful at all. Yeah, you would think this. By the way, that's something that would happen in a frat house. You're, you're right. But but the point of Hamilton and 
and so many others as they were drafting this constitution is that they were worried about the corruption and dishonesty that power uh, seems to infect people with. And we've seen that here. This was a corrupt FBI and Department of Justice that got in bed with the Hillary Clinton campaign and Democrats. They paid for a fabricated Russian information and fed it to the FBI and the DOJ in order to damage Trump and later destroy him when he became president to undo democracy and the election results. And that's really the story of the Russia hoax. But the story details are still unfolding. And I'm that, that's you know, why that's why I say Greg has to write the sequel. I've said it many times. I'm very serious about this. You're just learning this week. If you hadn't been digging on this Hannity show throughout this whole period, we'd have nothing. But because you have, we have plenty. Greg has to write now what we're learning about Nellie Orr's research on the Trump family. Can you imagine how big this cover-up has been if we're only now finding out more material details? I don't think we've scratched the surface yet. And if ever there was so-called you know, crooked opposition research, how about what the Clinton campaign was doing? It's unbelievable. You know, look at the story today. So for over a year year, a good year, maybe a year and a half, you have Donald Trump Jr. being accused of obtaining the phone records, which showed that Trump Jr. had actually spoken to two longtime Trump family friends, um, and the New York Times reported citing two people briefed on the matter, and Democrats suspected that Trump Jr. and his then-candidate father were, you know, were talking after that so-called big Trump Tower meeting. You know, he tweeted out today about Adam Schiff, and he was saying, well, they wouldn't let us get the phone records because Senate investigators are the one that found it. And he said, you know what, after a year of hearing about this one ad nauseum, yet another left-wing narrative officially bites the dust. The media's been wrong the whole time, Greg Jarrett. There's right. only been a few of us, including the three of us here, that have had this story right and corroborated and, and I've, as I've said before, there has been no shortage of media malpractice in the age of Donald Trump. The media so hated uh, the person and what he stood for in his policies and politics that they decided to drive a narrative that was completely false. They glommed on to the Russian hoax and drove it day in and day out to destroy Trump. And you know, the BuzzFeed story, and now what we found out over the last 24 hours, that, you know, the media and Democrats kept insisting that the president and his son had colluded together uh, to collude with Russia in the Trump Tower meeting. First of all, the Tower meeting was not a crime. And second of all, now we know that Don Jr. didn't call his father. He was calling a couple of friends, or they were calling him. So, you know, yet another It's a pretty part. spectacular fail, but here's the problem. They're just going to keep doing it. And oh, that's course, right. seemingly that's getting right. away with it, and they have built up an expectation that they've got them, that, that there that, was collusion. Right. And there's that's no... That's the big you know, danger. That's right. And look, at, and look at Roger Stone. I mean, a process crime again. 27 agents, SWAT teams, you know, armored vehicles, 17 vehicles in total for a uh, lie in the Congress. It's, it's, yeah, I, I think if you put it all together, what you see is using now people like an Andrew Weissman, this Mueller investigation and the media to accomplish what couldn't be accomplished through the ballot box. They're simply going to tear apart. I think that one of the dangers of what the media is doing is they don't care that they got it wrong. If they said it, people are going to believe it. You know, there's a unfortunately notorious character in history who did that sort of thing. You say, you know, you lie enough times, it just doesn't matter whether it was true or not. People believe it. It almost becomes the truth in their perception, at least. So attacking Trump, knocking him down, and then picking off his allies one at a time through the criminal justice system by making it so expensive they can't defend against the cases. They plead guilty to things they didn't commit. And then they say, you see what Mueller's accomplished? He's got 30-something uh, convictions already. For what? Look at the amount of money and time wasted. It's simply to do what you couldn't do at the ballot box and then decimate you know, the Trump team. It's Whether all, it's true or not. It is. We have now criminalized political differences and weaponized some of the most powerful people in the intelligence community, we know with surveillance, unmasking, and leaking raw intelligence, uh, even the upper levels of the most prestigious 
law enforcement group in the country, the FBI under James Comey and McCabe and James Baker, two of them under criminal investigation that we know of, maybe more soon, and the Department of Justice. It is, it's frightening that more Americans don't understand this is really dangerous and the double standard that we see every day. We don't, you know, all the people that we know that lied to Congress have not had pre-dawn raids with 27 armed agents and armored vehicles. Uh, we'll take a break. More with David Show. More with Greg Jarrett on the other side. Right, as we continue, uh, number one best-selling author, Greg Jarrett, The Russian Hoax, criminal defense attorney, civil liberties attorney, David Schoen. question I get asked the most is, well, what about all those people that, you know, how did Hillary, how did they fix her investigation? She obviously obstructed justice and 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 had secret government information on a server. Um, people ask me, well, what about those people that purposely lied and committed a fraud to a FISA court? Um, what about those people that signed off on a warrant and they didn't verify it? When are they going to get in trouble? I don't even know how to answer them at this point, Greg, because well, it, it's frustrating to me. Of course it is, but there are two people that are key to holding these folks accountable, and uh, one of them is... William Barr, who will become the Attorney General of the United States, who has vowed to hold them accountable to get to the bottom of it, to investigate them. The other one uh, is Lindsey Graham, the new uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, who has vowed to do the same thing. So uh, these are two people that uh, I'm optimistic will bring to light the corrupt acts, the misdeeds, the crimes, in my judgment, that were committed by people at the FBI the Department of Justice, and to some extent those in the Hillary Clinton campaign, as you pointed out, more than half a dozen of them made false statements. They lied, and documents show they lied, and Comey knew they lied and was confronted with the question, why aren't you prosecuting well, Didn't Comey them? lie when he was warned in August about the FISA warrant, the first one he signed in October? I mean, he verif- to do that, he, he verifies it's, it's true. He lied and to the held... FISA court. He deceived the judges. He okay, and then, but wait a minute. October 2016, he does the FISA, but then when he meets in Trump Tower with President-elect Trump, he said it's unverified. And he says to this day he's never verified it. David, real quick, we'll go, let you answer that. Yeah, you're 100% right. He's lied over and over and over again. And the answer to the question I think those people ask you is, these same people, Comey, McCabe, and all of those, were in power at the time Hillary did these things. The question is, politically, do we have the strength to do what has to be done now? Greg is right. It's got to come from bar. I'm skeptical, but I I hope that's right. I hope what Greg said is right and happens. If it doesn't, there's no equal justice under the law, and the Constitution, our foundation for all laws, you know, you're shredding it. Uh, Thank you both.